I missed the button. <clears throat> Not the four ball. No. no. Hey, they don't they, they like bringing back random WCW crap. <laughs> Why not the four ball? Yeah, so it's to see the shock master again. But who would be playing him this time? You could have the ironic twist, you could have Psycho Sid playing him. Oh dear. <laughs> it's too thin. People would know it. I got it. Yeah. Big Dick Johnson. Now, I'm pretty sure he got fired a couple of years ago. Oh, damn it, really? But anyway, we're, we're, we're going off track. <laughs> <laughs> this is part one of four. Yeah. This is the war game. And it's not at the full brawl, like we said. No, no, it's not. It, we're talking NXT TakeOver. <laughs> it's in Houston. So you know Booker's around somewhere. He might have even been in the crowd. Yeah, I think he was. Along with a few other former NXT superstars. Mm. And we kicked this one off with a man who likes to say, Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. The knockout artist. He's hard to hit. Apparently. He's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cassius Ono against Lars Sullivan. Yeah. <clears> this <throat> sort of reminds me of Snitsky. Yeah, he does a bit. Well, Snitsky, after he shaved his head, had the awful teeth put in. and yeah. Not the old Snitsky. The ECW one. <clears throat> mm. You know, I don't know why, but whenever I see Lars Sullivan, that massive knee brace on his, on his uh, right knee just... Puts me off straight away. So, I really don't know what they were trying to accomplish with this match. Because it was weird. Yeah. It, yeah. It wasn't on for very long. No. Cassius Ono got a little bit of offense in. Tiny bit. Little bit, but it was mostly all Lars Sullivan. Mm. It was not happy with it. And he ended up picking up the victory in this one. <laughs> with the... Whatever in the hell his finisher is. It's sort of like a choke slam, but he doesn't quite get the throat. No. More if he gets him around the gut. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that weird one, yeah. Doesn't look really all that convincing. But there you go. So, moving on to much more important stuff. Yes. Now, this match, well, I expected a lot because of one individual who was in it, but... This match pleasantly surprised me. We got to see a different side of the other wrestler in there. Mm. We are talking about Alistair Black. Oh, the Dutch destroyer. Here's the Velveteen Dream. <coughs> Patrick Clark. <gasps> Man, you're breaking kayfabe. Vince is going to be on our ass again. Again, the third time this year. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and... I really enjoyed this match because yeah. we got to see a different side of uh, Velveteen Dream and he actually quite impressed me. This was match of the night right here for me. I mean, this was a, a lot more of a psychological match. than mm. I mean, they were playing with each other, trying to get in each other's heads. Yeah, you're not going to do that, Black. It started off quite technical. Alistair did a lot of you know, lock-ups, a lot of submission moves. Yeah. It's good. You don't often see the the technical side of him, mm. but he can do it. You have to mention as well, Velveteen Dreams little nod to Rick Rude. Oh yeah, with yeah. his uh, ring attire. Yeah, he had a NXT takeover on it with a picture of Alistair Black mm. on his uh, thigh. <laughs> and yeah, and he, in his picture ran on me on the other leg. Yeah. Nice, nice throwback to when Rick Rude had Miss Elizabeth on his trunk. Oh. Don't tell Randy. Too late. <laughs> They're both gone. Yes. Jesus. And Rick Rude, actually. Jesus, yeah. Hell. So now, this match 
yeah, pleasantly surprised. And I was shocked how over Velveteen Dream was in this match. I mean, the crowd mm. were really chanting for him. Yeah, uh, I think he even done a... He do the elbow drop from he, the top rope. He did do the elbow. Yeah. But no, this was quite hard hitting. I mean, they were dropping bombs on each other. Yeah. But, in the end, Alistair Black had too much for the dream. Yeah. He hit him with that devastating black mass. Yep. And that was all she wrote. The Velveteen Dream. But no, after the match was over, he gave the Velveteen Dream what he wanted. He said his name. Mm. And the crowd were like, yay. <laughs> but I don't like how the commentators saying, oh yeah, they both won in the end. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. <laughs> Because the the match, Alistair Black won the match. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. How long did that one get, anyway? Just under 15 minutes. Oh, good match. Yeah. So, we're moving on. We had our first title match of the night. Yes. We had the fatal four-way vacant putting his or hers women's division on the line. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, vacant's back, everyone. <laughs> <sighs> We've missed him. Or her. <laughs> yeah, and to determine who'd be the new NXT Women's Champion, it was a fatal four way between Ember Moon, Tyree Sane, Nikki Cross, and no reason whatsoever, Peyton Morris. Mm, yeah, that's a bit of a strange one. <laughs> Yeah. Um. This match wasn't bad. For some unknown reason, the crowd were really over with uh, Peyton Royce. Yeah, that was a strange one. Yeah. I don't get the link there. I can assume she's from Australia. Mm. Maybe there's a lot of Australians in Houston. Maybe. I mean, uh, this, yeah. this, this was all right for a women's match. It got a bit crazy at times. Yeah, you. The, prob- the one problem I had with it was you just sort of knew where it was going in the end, though. It's a little bit predictable. Well, I sort of narrowed it down to two people, but there was one that I thought would win. Yeah. But no, the, the ending to this was actually pretty decent. It was. I mean, a double eclipse. Yeah, was it? Peyton Royce and Nikki Cross, mm. I think. Yeah. Oh, both of them. Yeah. And so finally, about three months too late, <laughs> Ember Moon picks up the win. And the NXT Women's Championship. Now, it says to me all along that she should have been the one to beat Asuka. Yeah. So, yeah, about three months too late, but it's happened, so... There we go. So moving on to our second title match of the night and mm. the final one because the tag team titles were not on the line. No, they were Not in the war games. <laughs> we had Drew McIntyre defending the NXT title against, for no reason whatsoever, Andrade Cian Almas. Yes. Apparently you haven't got to do anything. All you've got to do is just ask him. Yeah. Apparently that entitles you to a title shot. That is how this whole storyline has came about. He hasn't earned it, he doesn't deserve it, but he said, I want a title shot. And Drew McIntyre said, yeah, okay. This match was just weird. Yeah, I didn't quite get this one. Really, really weird and slightly awkward to watch. And again... Very weird crowd. Mm. They were really over with Andrade Cian Almas. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't get why. <clears throat> I mean, he's not a bad wrestler, oh, but no, no, no. He, he's a heel. Yes. He's but a he's heel. meant to be, and uh, I don't know, I, I, I don't like this whole valet thing with uh, Zelina Vega. 
Yeah, I mean, she interfered a couple of times. McIntyre caught her when she did a crossbody off the top rope. Yeah. Had this been, I don't know, attitude error, he would have slammed her down and got rid of her. But no, this is this is the PG era, so he put her down gently and said, don't do it again. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know where to go with this match other than the ending. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't terribly impressed by this match. No, it wasn't great. It's like it, it raised more questions than it gave answers. Hmm. It's like there was a lot of, is McIntyre injured? Is he going up to the main roster? Mm. A lot of people said the next program was going to be McIntyre and Adam Cole. Okay. So I'm guessing that's scrapped now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Andrade Cien Almas picked up the victory in this one and became the new... NXT champion. Mm. Uh, he won it with his um, like arm lock DDT. Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. Maybe it did look pretty nasty the way he dropped him on his head. Yeah, but no, it was just a just a strange ending. I mean, normally they give champions you know a couple of months before they make them lose the belt. Yeah. And there was a lot of questions of, is McIntyre in, genuinely injured? Mm. Or is he going up to the main roster? Time will tell, I suppose. I don't know. It's a strange decision for me. Yeah. And now, we're on to the match we were all waiting for. The War of the Games. <laughs> you had the Undisputed Era. The Authors of Pain yep. and Roderick Strong in matching ring attire. Yeah, I mean, that, that was different. And of course, Sanity. I like the promo video they did for this one with Paul Ellerin saying that he was actually in the first War Games match. He was. Which I didn't know. I'm imagining he was with LOD. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, um. <laughs> I mean, the rules of this one were a bit were a bit strange to me. It's like, three people started in the ring, one from each team. Yeah. The rest of the teams were suspended in shark cages. Mm. Not high above the ring, obviously. No. And it was like every three minutes, one team would be released. And the yeah. match doesn't officially start until all the teams are in the rings. Yeah. So you had like, what, ten minutes of... Everyone fighting, but they couldn't pin, they couldn't make anyone submit. Yeah. And if you left the cage, you forfeit. Mm. Yeah, see, I, I, I liked that element. And then as well, uh, for any old school fans out there, obviously, in the original War Games, you had a roof yeah. on the cage as well. But Triple H decided they weren't going to do the roof. They'd leave it open so there were more inventive ways of doing different moves and mm. various <laughs> other things. So, you know, I'll commend him for that. He was trying to think think out of the box, creativity-wise. <laughs> Here's one of the major problems, though. Yeah, they didn't have a roof so they could do stuff off the top of the cage. They didn't do all that much stuff off the top of the cage. No, admittedly they didn't. <laughs> Other than Adam Cole quite comedically sliding across the top of the cage <laughs> to get away from Killian Dane. Hmm. There, there really wasn't that much jumping off the top of the cage. No, there wasn't. Most of the action was confined to the ring. Hmm. But I will say, apart from Alistair Black vs Velveteen Dream, this is... Definitely match of the night. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was crazy. But all, all nine guys, they all brought it. When Good. Sanity came in, they brought weapons in. Mm. Didn't we have a moment where there was like a seven-man move? Yeah. I think? It was like two triple power bombs, and Adam Cole was randomly in the middle. 
Yeah, it was, was it something like uh, Authors of Pain, I think. We're going to double powerbomb. Uh, no, top rope suplex Adam Cole and then uh, Sani come along and done a double powerbomb. Yeah. I think to, uh, well, triple powerbomb, I should say. It, it was crazy. And there was yeah. there was another one where there was a suplex right off the top of the cage into like all the all of the guys. Yeah, which was pretty cool. No, I think every I think every person had at least one good moment in this match. Even the man with the most painful voice in wrestling. <laughs> yeah, he didn't do too badly. <laughs> Poor Eric Young. Jesus, <laughs> he needs a lozenger. <laughs> <laughs> but no in the end after well, how much how long did this go on for it felt like a long time over 36 minutes jeez but no at no point were you, were you like what well, this is boring it was a very entertaining match yeah. but in the end it came down to Eric Young with a steel chair he took a shining wizard from Adam Cole into the steel chair and the Undisputed Era picked up the win. Yay. We called it. We did. We called it. That was our prediction, damn it. So, are Fish and O'Reilly going to take over the tag team division now? Maybe. <laughs> You'd think they'd be going off to Sanity next. Yeah. You see, now this is the weird one now. It's playing with the NXT title. No, oh, see. Alistair Black. It's got to be. He's got to be going over then. <laughs> you can't have him losing the owl mass. <laughs> That's got to be the, the next feud. Alistair Black wins the title and then they can do him and Adam Cole. Yeah, I'll be all up for that. Adam Cole and Black. <laughs> yeah, that, that'll main event the NXT one before WrestleMania. Hmm. Which I'm it's over it. New Orleans? Yeah, it must be. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they change it again, call it like take over, let the good times roll. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, dear Lord. <laughs> That's creative, folks. Yeah. <laughs> and that was how we ended the war games. Yeah, good show. Undisputed era on top. Now. <laughs> Big question is can survive a series topic? No. <laughs> don't don't hold your breath, folks. Just <laughs> just don't. Well, the fact that we've only got one title match on the whole card and it's on the pre show. Which we didn't watch. Well, I did a little bit, but I got left rather disappointed. Well, we will get to that in due time. Yeah. Yeah. So, from your hosts, the master of the brain damage, Martin, and the one and only Sam H. We'll see you again for the next one. Where was I?